So at some point, yeah, it'll, it won't make any sense to pay uh, mortgages and this kind of a deal as the, the receiving company just simply won't exist. But it's not going to be a good time for anyone. Oh, it certainly doesn't sound good. And we, um, we expect quite brutally, and I need to say it just this way, very brutally, we expect millions of people in the United States to die directly caused from deflation. And this destructive deflation will hit us in such a way that people will die at our most vulnerable uh, sides of our population band. Uh, people being kept alive on machinery will die because we just won't have the resources to pay for it anymore. People in um, dire health straits, uh, newborns all the way up through very old people, will die simply because we won't have a system to support them anymore. We've extended it on debt to the rest of the planet, and that note is being called, and we're all going to have to radically change our life style because the 6% of the population in the United States has been consuming 25% of the natural resources of the planet for decades now, and that we've got to go back to 6%. That will cause a lot of people to die off, and we need to be aware of this going in. Many people we won't be able to, to do anything about, but those people that are marginal, that would die without attention, if you put your attention on them now, you'll be able to get them through. I hope everybody who has loved ones in that category uh, pay attention to that. One of the things that you talked about on the, the last time you were here was the elite being afraid that they're going to lose control of the media. Do you still believe that? Yes, yes. We were, we were, we knew that they, you have to understand how our process works. We start at the high level, so we saw that they had fear. And under there, there was a subset that was a fear about loss of control. And under there, there were subsets that led us to believe that we were thinking it was the loss of control of the media. That appears to be simultaneous with the loss of control of the dollar. And so we sort of missed that part of it. As the dollar collapses over summer and, uh, and really degenerates in early fall, uh, the whole media structure will break apart and people that used to have their voices constrained by being paid super high salaries and otherwise being blackmailed will start uh, speaking out about things. Some of the undeniability language that we had, which was a major theme for this summer, has been confirmed because, for instance, we now see the White House and in, in the person of Obama saying it is undeniable that there is current climate change due to global warming. And so there's the language popping up. Well, sooner or later, that undeniability will also be attached to the um, loss of the press, the propaganda arm. That'll be amazing. I mean, I look at ABC going into the White House to, uh, you know, give the health um, announcement, you know, to the Obama right. health plan, and it's almost like ABC has been taken over by our government. Well, they're all owned by the... You know, our government is owned by the same people that own the media, so we shouldn't be exactly. surprised by that. We think of our government as the top dog, but it's not. Obama is 27 layers down on the, on the security classifications. I know. When I read that, I could not believe it. My old security classification was higher than his. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? And I know. It's, that's it, the, the circumstances. We know that whoever is at the top level owns everything. That's exactly right. What do you think is going to happen to Iran? I mean, did you see this Iran-Iranian revolution coming? Well, it's not technically speaking as it appears. So I don't think anything's going to happen to Iran. I think the indigenous power structure is going to be able to beat back the, uh, quote, green revolution being fomented by the Zionists at the moment. This is not a 100% native organization issue going on there. And... The uh, facts as, quote, facts as being presented to the uh, uh, Western population by our media are not supported when you read other media. So go read about it in Russian, and you see that there's been nothing but a uh, constant stream of, um, uh, of groaning and uh, grumbling from the Iranians about the CIA monkeying about with local organizations and promoting all of this. Plus, there's curious components to this. Um, let's go back to the Georgian Revolution, the Rose Revolution, right? And the Orange Revolution and, mm -hmm. and the, um, one of the stands there. All of those were promoted for, promoted and paid for by the Zionists out of Israel. And in fact, in some cases, they actually flew in millions of flowers for everybody to have as a, as their element there, their token. Now oh we see gosh. green is coming out here and we're seeing lots of activity of external support. Not to say that the people involved 
are, don't have legitimate gripes or anything and are not acting in a legitimate fashion. But you notice they've got huge amounts of support from Western organizations against their indigenous government. And to be honest, I don't think they have the population mass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're not they're not at the two percent level, which pretty much guarantees the revolution will be successful. You can have a revolution that's successful with less, uh, as the, as we found out when we were paid, I believe it was a measly million dollars in 1953 to overthrow the um, uh, existing democratically elected Republican government of Iran and replace it with the Shah. The you know the British um, Anglo-American or Anglo-Iranian Petroleum Company, which w went on to become uh, British Petroleum (BP), they paid the CIA to overthrow the government that had been put in place by a legitimate revolution. And the CIA did it with some, I think, 50,000 people involved and lots of money. And uh, that revolution was overtaken, and our puppet government of the Shah of Iran was kicked out by Khomeini. And they knew, when Khomeini had 1.5% of the populace, that they were doomed. And so the CIA started taking measures to try and counter it. Now they're at the point where they're, where they're trying to work the numbers raise enough of the populace so that they don't have to put that much money in because basically they're broke. And they realize this. Our dollars don't go as far as they used to in terms of bribing uh, foreign officials to be uh, attempt to overthrow their government. Wow. So what do you think is going to happen in Iran? I think uh, Ahmadinejad and the existing um, power structure will stay there after a period of uproar and uh, turmoil that will continue through about mm, to the 20th or so of July and then sort of wind down, appearing to be inconclusive, because that's still sort of on our track. And then if we're correct, sometime around October 26th, it'll all flare up again and get really nasty from November onward, as the Zionists figure the, the global economic system based on the dollar is shot, and so they're going to take their, their chance to try and dominate and control all of the Mideast. But it'll be um, a failure on their part, uh, but uh, a bold plan nonetheless. Now, this Green Revolution, and, and that's the Iranian Revolution, it, it appears to me that the Green is no accident if the Zionists did it. And what are you feeling about that? Do you feel oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. The memes are there. The, um, the neuro-linguistic programming, all of the uh, con control structures, the way in which the uh, supporting uh, uh, aid is given, the fact that they chose green, the fact the particular color that was chosen, the symbology being used, the fact that all of this is done, being done in um, English, the predominant um, signs you see and everything on YouTube, Twitter, all of this is, is an English language um, uh, promotion as opposed to an indigenous Farsi. And the English that's being used betrays an outside influence. Bear in mind that it's very difficult for a, a native English speaker to pretend to be a foreign language speaker who learned English as a second language. They will inevitably betray themselves by the use of articles and some of the um, uh, peripatetic structures within our language that don't exist in other methods or other languages. So I've seen a lot of that. A lot of the um, verbiage being generated is coming from native English speakers from the West and then cycling through the the control structures and coming up from the revolution and then coming back out at us. Now, um, you're saying that we've got the collapse of the U.S. empire centered around October 26th. Is that, is that still what you're seeing? Yes. And then you've got North Korea attacking with nuclear weapons just a few weeks later. Is it really it, North it sure Korea? Looks that, it sure looks that way. It sure looks like North Korea is going to do it sometime uh, between, well, the whole process of the escalation to the point where they lose control begins in November and runs its course through March. Well, you know, I look, uh, I remember the television series Jericho, where we were actually attacked by our own country or people within our own country, and it was blamed on a foreign power. Now, how do we know that North Korea is really going to attack us or if those bombs aren't already here in the United States and they just blame it on North Korea? No, I don't believe the U.S. per se is going to be attacked. I don't think continental United States could be attacked by North Korea. And I think that the promulgation of that idea shows all of the uh, language um, uh, around memoring. They're trying to drive that idea home for their own purposes. Our data shows North Korea 
attacking South Korea and uh, attempting okay. to wipe out our presence there and then uh, being basically obliterated. So, in other words, North Korea attacks South Korea and the U.S. or Russia or someone obliterates them. Correct. Uh, they attack South Korea and our military presence there. And our data suggests that their command structure of North Korea is effectively decapitated in a very single, swift, um, well-executed stroke. And thereafter, no one just, everybody's got other stuff going on and they just don't worry about them. Okay, so North Korea uh, is just completely out of the picture after that. Right. Bear in mind that they are an extremely resource-poor country in spite of the fact that they've concentrated it. And even if they've got uh, multiple um, warheads on uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, et cetera, et cetera, they don't have any of the nature of logistics and control systems that are required to be an effective nuclear power. That is to Mm -hmm. say that they're a one-shot kind of a deal. And their uh, ability to launch missiles to the U.S. depends on their relationship to us across a very large ocean, and they're more likely to try and hit Alaska than they would Hawaii, simply because it's easier, and Mm -hmm. thus try and rain stuff down the coast. But even so, our data doesn't support their ability to do any of that in any kind of an effective way. And it strategically makes much more sense for them to try and eliminate the military threat which is closest to them. And that's kind of our thinking on it. Now, that's monkey mind. Our data shows that North Korea attacks. Um, And then we go to some level of uh, interpretation to come up with the idea that, well, there's other smaller bits of data that seem to suggest they only attack South Korea. But beyond that, it's kind of speculation. They might try something against the United States, but again, it, it... Even in spite of the fact that their leader is an absolute loon, it seems really crazy that anybody would attempt that. Yeah, I agree. But uh, uh, I don't agree that, uh, I mean, I believe that we've got nuts inside our government that would attack us and blame it on North Korea. But um, it wouldn't be believed. It wouldn't be believed. I think powers that be are at the point where they know that there's probably about 6% of the population that would instantly not believe another 9-11. Uh, any yeah, form, I no agree more with false that. flags. So that 6% pretty much guarantees that it wouldn't be accepted and they couldn't ram through, you know, Warren Commission kind of close it for 50-year kind of stuff in order to have it rammed through. And I think they're aware of the numbers the same way I am, and it, makes, and it does color their thinking, bearing in mind I get a lot of my information from the freely available stuff that they publish. You know, Council for Foreign Relations, all these guys put out vast quantities of crud, and I just sift through that as well. Now, getting back to this green revolution, it is interesting that the Drudge Report had the picture of the green head by, headband on an Iranian woman. At the same time, they've got a picture of Michelle Obama with this great big green uh, lettuce that had just grown in her garden. You know, I hate to say it, but I grow lettuce, and I'm in California, and we've had a lot of hot weather, and I planted lettuce about the same time she did. My lettuce isn't anywhere as big as hers is. Yeah, so but lettuce, have... is a, lettuce is a cold weather crop. I mean, I hate to tell you, but oh you know, it, it's actually better to be cold and rainy for lettuce. Well, maybe, that maybe, maybe it really did grow in her garden then. But I think it's just kind of strange that uh, that we're getting green. Uh, Drudge, I'm certain, sends messages on his web page. And, um, oh, I think he's he's actually manipulated and many times doesn't know it. But I, I agree with you. The yeah. green on the headband. The juxtaposition of the photos, the fact that you frequently see the, and of course if we look at the archetype, the the headband uh, has has a bifurcated archetype, which I needn't go into to too much of it. But basically the idea is headbands are part of the quote uniform that empowers people. It identifies everybody as a group, it binds them as a group, and then it also binds the individual's mind, their own head. So basically they're saying that we've been programmed and we're under control. And then if you see the headband in relation to the upturned palm. That's a neuro-linguistic 